get 25% off all Financial Edge online courses by using the code AFSAL25 at checkout. Whether you're a student, graduate or working professional interested in a career in the world of banking and finance, you've likely wondered at some point, how much does a managing director at an investment bank actually make? Do they earn in the hundreds of thousands or in the tens of millions of pounds? So the average annual base salary of a managing director at an investment bank is between 300 and 500,000 pounds per year and that's the base salary so that's around five to ten times that of an analyst in the front office so an analyst in the front office division of an investment bank can expect in their first year to take home a base salary of around fifty thousand pounds and so an MD someone with 10 15 years plus experience can expect to take a base salary of between 300 and 500 thousand pounds in dollars that's around 400 thousand to 600 thousand dollars but that's only one component of their salary and i'll go into more detail throughout the video in today's video we are going to demystify the truth about managing director salaries at investment banks because nobody in the world of banking ever shares their salary information they don't have to but it's just a topic that everyone kind of shies away from and secondly i know a lot of you will be applying for spring weeks internships and graduate schemes and so this information might be useful for you. Everything I'll be covering in today's video has been timestamped in the video description, so feel free to skip around to the bits that you're most interested in. It's important to know in banking, there are two components to the salary. You've got the base salary, so that's the figure that I've just mentioned, and then you've got the bonus. So together, these combine to make total compensation. The bonus can be multiples of the base salary, and we're gonna talk about that in a second. Before we talk about that, it's also important to mention the front office and the back office. The front office of an investment bank is the area of the investment bank that manages client relationships, and they're predominantly responsible for generating revenue for the bank. And then you've got the back office. So the back office doesn't really interact with clients as much. Examples of the back office include technology, operations, finance, those are back office divisions. And then in the front office, you've got the sales and trading floor, you've got asset management, you've got private banking, you've got the investment banking division. These areas go out and generate money and these areas are responsible for managing the risks within that investment bank, managing the technology and everything at the back end. And so as a result, the front office divisions tend to get higher salaries and this reflects into bonuses. This is where it gets a bit more messy and harder to pinpoint because bonuses can range from zero pounds or dollars to multiples of the individual's base salary. So let's say you've got a trader who's a managing director. They're a star trader or a star banker who is executing deals and trades and making the bank hundreds of millions of pounds. This individual is likely to get a very big bonus at the end of the year because they've contributed in very good performance to the bottom line of that investment bank. However, if you've got a trader or an investment banker who has had a really, really bad year and their division or their team or their particular sector has seen a decline and no profits whatsoever, chances are they might get fired or they might get a very, very low bonus if they're lucky. Similarly, you've got the back office. These individuals don't have the opportunity to kind of go out and generate huge revenues. As a result, their bonuses will be smaller than their counterparts in the front office. And so you have to keep these caveats in mind when you're thinking about bonuses. And for that reason, the range of bonuses that a managing director earns at an investment bank really does vary quite hugely. Also, it's important to mention that the bonus is determined by lots of different factors so it could be the market environment a determining factor is the divisions so or back office or front office determining factor is how well your team performed if you're performing to a high standard you're going to get compensated accordingly if you're not performing to a high standard it will be a smaller bonus and your base salary will grow less compared to your counterparts who are performing better than you so there's lots of factors that come into play but it's easier to pinpoint the base salary as opposed to the bonus component of your total compensation okay equity this is important to consider as a managing director in an investment bank, the more senior you get, the more time you spend at the bank, more and more of your salary gets paid, not in cash, but in equity. So what this means is, and it's a mechanism for the bank to kind of tie you in because you are senior, you're earning lots of money, but the bank doesn't want to lose you, right? And so let's say, for example, you're a managing director and you earn a salary, base salary and bonus together of one million pounds for argument's sake. And then 50% of that salary, for example, is paid 
as equity. So you get 500k cash, great, into your pocket for the year. And then the other 50%, 500k, that gets paid in equity over a period of four or five years. You only unlock that equity, so that extra 500K in equity, you unlock it if you stay with the bank for another three, four, five years, so on and so forth. And the reason for that is so you don't take the one million pounds and then quit or go to a competitor, the bank has to lock you in. So it gives you half of your money and the rest in equity in order, it's a catch 22, right? It says, if you leave before you earn all this equity, you don't get the equity. So you're forfeiting the equity. You can only earn that equity if you do another four or five or so years at the firm. And so that's kind of the lockup that you might hear. The more senior you get, the harder it is to leave unless you sacrifice a lot of your salary and equity. So that's something to be aware of. And that's the equity component of your salary. This only typically comes into play for senior individuals at the bank. You don't really get any equity or much as an analyst or an associate relative to the amount that the managing directors and other directors earn. All right, why do managing directors earn so much? In the grand scheme of things, yes, 500,000 pounds is a lot of money, but why do they get paid that much? When you think of it, the transactions that the bank is participating in, so the deals that the bank is executing or the trades that the traders are taking, for example, these are in the multi-million figures anyways. And so the real winner is the investment bank. They are generating profits in the billions every single quarter. And so to pay a managing director 500,000 pounds or a few million pounds is actually not huge in the grand scheme of things compared to the profits that the bank is making. But even then, the bank locks them in through that equity component in order to avoid losing a very good managing director to a competitor or to a different industry or organization. So downsides, yes, the money is good and that's great, but there are downsides to being a managing director at an investment bank. And the most common one is obviously work-life balance. You are expected to work throughout the day. You're checking your phone and your emails when you leave the office. You don't really get much of a work-life balance, although some managing directors are better than others. But the truth is, as a managing director, you are responsible for bringing in business. You're meant to be the rainmaker. You're meant to be the person that manages big client relationships and brings in business continually. You need to manage downwards as well. You need to make sure your VPs, so those business below you are managing their associates who are managing their analysts because everyone needs to be performing to a top level in order to get good performance and bring in more money to the bank so then your team's bonus pot grows and from that bonus pot you get your fair share and so there's a lot of pressure to perform there's a lot of high stakes involved there's a lot of risk if you don't perform well one year or if your team suffers then chances are you might get fired or you might get no bonus and when you've been earning bonuses in excess of 500,000 pounds or a million pounds every year and then you get no bonus that's going to be a big dent in your wallet and your personal confidence in your career and so there's a lot at stake there's a lot at risk but obviously the positives are you earn a big salary you earn equity in the company which are all good also it's important to note that banking is not a get rich quick scheme you don't just you know join and then within five years you're earning a million pounds it takes a very long time and those that make managing director are truly interested and passionate about the industry and the work that they do you can't just go in and expect to become extremely wealthy by not really being passionate about the work that you do and so it's a very very long game and it's not for everyone that's the truth if you're lucky you make managing director in 10 years but most people do it in 15 plus actually most people don't make managing director they get to vp and they're happy there there's too much stress or too much to sacrifice to make managing director there's so many different factors but yeah it's a very long game and it's not a get rich quick scheme everything does vary depending on a multitude of factors and these include the size of the organization, the specialism of your team or industry that you're operating in, the region that your bank is in. Some regions or some firms pay managing directors more or less depending on some of these factors. Also the bargaining power of the managing director. If you are bringing in a shitload of revenue for the investment bank, you have a good leg to stand on when it comes to negotiating your base salary or your bonus because you can easily threaten to leave and then you know the partners above you will realize you're going to be very hard to replace and so they might pay you more. Bargaining power comes into it but on the flip side of things the bargaining power of the organization is that equity component that they put into your salary. Lots of factors come into play and it goes without saying take all of these figures with a pinch of salt and last but not least don't get caught up on the numbers you know all these figures they sound great but it's important to know 
that if you're looking to go into banking just for the money and you have no interest in the career, you won't last, you'll probably end up doing more harm than good to your mental health. You know, if you're interested in breaking in, go for it, spend a few years, see if you like it, look at your seniors, ask yourself, can you spend 25, 30, 40 years in this industry? If you can, great. If you can't, be honest with yourself, consider alternatives. Hopefully this video has been informative and I will see you in the next one. Done.